What's the biggest therapeutic challenge when treating dry eye patients with a flare? There are a number of issues. The first is you don't want to overwhelm them with too many things to do. So you have to selectively pick certain therapeutic interventions uh, that will help them the most. You also have to be worried about the complications of the therapeutic interventions. For example, the steroids, as we mentioned, can cause problems like elevated intraocular pressure, uh, prolonged healing response, and susceptibility to infection. Okay. The other thing that's very challenging in treating these patients is that their disease is chronic and it is never going to completely be cured. So constantly maintaining a level of, of care with these patients is part of the difficulty of treating dry eye syndrome. My medication of choice when I'm managing a flare for dry eyes is Flarex, and, and the name speaks for itself. It manages the flare-ups of dry eye disease. What I'm looking for is something that has a rapid onset of action something that's efficacious, something that's readily available, and something that's going to make the patients feel better, along with reducing the inflammation that's on their ocular surface. Flarex works for me. It has a long track record, a proven track record of safety, of efficacy, um, the price point is good, and it's easy to get a hold of. So patients appreciate all four of those aspects of Flarex. That's really my go-to. There are other options, but when it comes to tamping down inflammation, I know it's going to work. I know it's very safe. I know it's a quick way of helping the patient feel better. And then I know I'm planning for the long term, but I need to tamp down that flare uh, quickly. And so that this is my one, my medication of choice. When I have a patient on a long-term dry eye immunomodulator, sometimes they have flares. And when they have flares, I like to use a steroid like Flarex to treat that inflammation. The reason I like Flarex is it's quite potent. Um, the studies that were done years ago when comparing Flarex to prednisolone acetate, which is a very familiar steroid, um, the results were equivalent. So we have a steroid that's very potent, but I also like the side effect profile. So anytime we start a steroid, we worry about things like increased pressure, for example. I'm more comfortable using a steroid like Flarex um, just because I'm more comfortable with the side effect profile, but I also know it's quite potent and it's going to get the job done. When we have breakthrough symptoms in a patient who's been on an immunomodulator, which steroid do I use and why? Dry eye disease is not a steady state problem. Even in people who have extremely well-controlled chronic dry eye disease, specifically patients who've been on immunomodulators for a long time, you can still have triggers that give them symptom flare-ups. They can be cruising along for months and months and months at a time and then something occurs that ramps up the inflammation. Maybe they take a flight and there's low relative humidity in the cabin of the airliner. Maybe they have allergies. Perhaps they've been working at home and they go back to the office and now they have a mask on. So they're all pro-inflammatory things. They get a flare up. What do we do? Well, we have to beat down that inflammation and to do so, we use steroids. There are all kinds of steroids on the marketplace. The Mac Daddy is prednisolone, and you can use any version of prednisolone. The challenge, of course, is that your patients may want to use that for a long period of time, and you really don't want to have them on that for that long. You can use one of the Lodopredinol products. The Lodopredinol products are highly effective, but what you're really looking for, I think, is that product that marries the strength of the stronger steroids along with the safety of some of the steroids that are newer developments. And I think fluoromethylone is an excellent example of that. We get super rapid relief in patients who are having flare-ups when we prescribe fluoromethylone. And we also have super quick resolution of the clinical signs that we see on the surface of the eye. At the same time, Fluoromethylone is an extremely safe steroid to be using. We don't have to worry about the elevation in intraocular pressure. We don't have to worry about cataractogenesis, especially if we're using it in short bursts. Now, when we're thinking about fluoromethylone, we have to think about what type of fluoromethylone we're going to use. Fluoromethylone alcohol is effective, but not as effective as fluoromethylone acetate. Fluoromethylone acetate seems to have the same efficacy and power as the original MacDaddy, as prednisolone. 
it also maintains the safety of the fluoromethylone molecule. So if I have a choice, I lean toward fluoromethylone acetate for those reasons.